Welcome to SolarEdge's webinar on installing on the ground. In this webinar, we're going to cover everything that your ground crews need to know. For the last couple of years, SolarEdge has been working with the top installers in the United States to perfect this process, and we're here to share our best practices with you. Joining me today is Cameron Stewart, who's going to be going over the details of installing on the ground with SolarEdge. Thanks, Mike. If you've already watched your Optimize Your Rooftop installation, then we've already worked on the roof, and now it's time to get on the ground. First and foremost, as you know, SolarEdge is a three-part system where we have one module per optimizer on the roof running down to our single phase inverters. We have seven inverters in our product line ranging from three kilowatts to 11.4 kilowatts. There's gonna be six steps that we're gonna talk through today. First, it's gonna be unpacking the inverter. Then we're gonna throw that bad boy up on the wall. We're gonna wire it, DC and AC conductors, Activate the installation, which is a little bit different step than most other inverters. We're going to pair the optimizers to the inverter, and then we're going to go through some basic menu options. But before we talk any more about that, let's get to unpacking the inverter. The inverter is shipped in this large upright box with the DC disconnect installed at the factory. There's a rectangle about midway through on the inverter box that says viewing window. Go ahead and cut that open and pull out a small box that says installation manual on it that's identified here by the red circle. You want to make sure you hold on to that installation manual because it is important during the activation process. So we need that product. After you've done that, go ahead and cut around the bottom of the box with your box cutter and we're going to lift the cardboard straight off of the inverter. What should remain behind is an inverter with styrofoam encased on it. The piece of styrofoam that rests on top of the inverter itself also holds the mounting bracket. So make sure you don't lose that piece of styrofoam as well as the mounting bracket. You need that to mount the inverter. Sometimes that piece of styrofoam gets stuck inside the box. So it's got your bracket. Make sure you pull out all of the styrofoam to locate your bracket. With the inverter unboxed and the mounting bracket in hand, it's time to mount the inverter. First, I recommend finding a structural support member, so a stud behind a wall, and pre-drill a pilot hole. Then, using the inverter bracket as a template, you're going to mark out all the mounting locations of the bracket, so you can drill the rest of your pilot holes with ease. There is a 4-inch minimum cooling clearance on either side of the inverter, and 8 inches for the top and bottom. However, if you have two inverters for a single residence and you're mounting those inverters side by side, those cooling clearances become additive. So instead of four inches, it's going to be eight inches in between the inverters. There are currently two types of mounting bracket. Uh, type one is a big rectangular bracket that has two notches. Those notches need to be faced up. And just to clarify, there's going to be an engraved word with an arrow that says up so you know which way to mount the bracket. The type 2 bracket has two metal tabs that point up. It is impossible to install this bracket incorrectly with the inverter being able to hang on it. So that's why we developed the type 2 bracket. So once you have the bracket secured to the wall, you're just going to lift the inverter up and then catch those metal tabs on the type 2 bracket. There are securing bolts that are supplied with the inverter Make sure you get those in so the inverter is secured to the wall and secured to the bracket. The bottom of the DC disconnect, there's a small bracket that can also be secured to the wall. Now, if you open up the cover of the DC disconnect switch, there's four five millimeter bolts. So just back those out and locate the drill templates on the side, back, or bottom of the inverter. If you're mounting the inverter outside, it is always recommended for your conduit entries to come into the bottom of the inverter. So we're basically making a drip loop using the conduit. Which brings us to step three, wiring the inverter. So there are a couple of options for DC disconnects, one with a revenue grade meter or one without the revenue grade meter. So grab a paddle bit, a hole saw or a unibit and we're going to drill those drill templates for our conduit entry. If the revenue grade meter option is located in your DC disconnect, it's on a pivot. So just swing it or rotate it down out of your way during the installation process. 
After I've pulled my conductors into the DC disconnect, I'm gonna strip about an inch off of the insulation before I land it or terminate it in my terminal block. So the DC terminal blocks are located on the left-hand side of the DC disconnect, and they're clearly marked DC positive and DC negative. These are compression style terminal blocks, so I don't have any maintenance or torque requirements that I have to adhere to. That's one of the reasons I really like these compression style terminal blocks. To terminate the conductor, I'm gonna use my flat blade screwdriver and push it into the square hole at about a 30 degree angle and then press up to release the clamp. Then I'm gonna land my conductor in the round hole, pull my screwdriver out, tug test, and make sure it's a, a good fit. You may have needed to install a rapid shutdown kit depending on your AHJ's code cycle. If you've done that, don't forget to enable it once you have the inverter powered up and ready to go. To enable the rapid shutdown, I'm gonna press the LCD button and hold it for five seconds. Then I'm gonna drop down to the maintenance menu, scroll to optimizer configuration, scroll to set rapid shutdown, and then enable. The AC conductors terminate just like the DC conductors, except for a higher power inverters. They have a compression style terminal block that requires a Phillips screwdriver, and you turn it counterclockwise a quarter turn. It's clearly identified on the terminal block, so just read the instructions if you're confused. If you have the revenue grade meter that's been factory installed, it's important to remember not to route your cables through our factory installed CT. You can throw off the measurements if you do that. So again, just go around it, over it, just don't go through it. After you've landed all of your conductors, it brings us to step four of the installation process, activating the installation. All you need to do is take that brown box that we pulled out of the viewing window earlier, inside that brown DVD sized box, there's an envelope. The envelope has an SE card. It looks like a micro SD card. Essentially, you're gonna put that SE card in the top of the communication board, and it has a sticker that identifies SD card. Once that card is inserted, we're gonna turn on AC power to the site. The inverter will automatically sense the card and start the activation process. It takes about a minute to five minutes. Uh, don't turn off the inverter during this process. It's super easy to do. Because I know you guys, and I know you like to throw away your installation manuals, SolarEdge has started printing the activation code on the label that is adhered to the side of the inverter. So if you lose your SE card, it's damaged, it's lost, don't worry, we've got you covered. Just look at the sticker on the side of the inverter and manually enter the activation code. Which brings us to our fifth step, which is pairing the optimizers. This is what gets the optimizers to talk to the inverter and sets up that module level data. If I don't need to adjust any of the menu options in my inverter, I can go ahead and close the lid. To do that, I always recommend that you take these six bolts and tighten them like you would a car tire in a star pattern. So go top left, bottom right, top right, bottom left mid right, mid left, and then repeat to ensure that seal is good on the inverter. To perform the pairing function, you're gonna to need to locate the LCD button and the on off switch. It's a red toggle switch or a black quarter rotational switch. After we know where those two switches are located, we're gonna turn on our DC power and our AC power. To perform the pairing, we're gonna press and hold that green LCD button. Then the menu is gonna change on the front of the inverter. It'll tell you to keep holding the button to enter the pairing process. So you just keep holding that green LCD button, then it'll prompt you to turn the switch on. That's the red toggle switch, on off switch. So turn that to the on position, then it starts the pairing process and gives you a countdown. It's gonna take about three minutes for this process to finish. It is always recommended to pair the inverter with the optimizers during good solar irradiance. So if you can, during good sunlight, make sure that's when you perform the pairing process. So that brings us to the conclusion of our installation process. I always recommend you take a couple of pictures before leaving the site. So we're gonna navigate through some menu options to make sure that this happens. To navigate the menu, you're gonna locate that green LCD button. To cycle through the menu, you just short press it, 
To enter a menu option, you press and hold the LCD button. The most important screen to take a picture of is the power production verification screen. So again, press the LCD button until you get here. It tells us our DC voltage, our AC voltage, as well as our AC output power. Most importantly, it tells us that the number of optimizers that have been talking to the inverter within the last hour versus the number of optimizers that have talked to the inverter within its lifetime. So if we have 10 optimizers and we're expecting 10, perfect. The SOK tells us that the inverter is talking to Solar Edge and we're reporting data on our monitoring portal. For more information on our monitoring, please feel free to check out our other how-to videos. Once again, my name is Cameron Stewart. If you have any questions, never hesitate to call us, write us, or email us. We're happy to help you. And my main motivation is to help you and your business become successful. Again, thank you and have a great day.